there's a good possibility that uh, Brad and, and Russell will not play, but but travel and get some work there. Um, maybe a few other guys. Uh, DD hasn't participated in practice. Robin has done a little bit of uh, practicing, so maybe he might be another candidate that doesn't play, but play by ear. The rest of the guys, uh, it's going to be some uh, good opportunities for some guys to play some pretty good minutes to get a good look. Like I said earlier, throughout the week, people are fighting for a uh, starting spot and, and also playing time. How's that going, by the way, in just terms of the competition? Um, how trans I guess transparent is not really the right word, but like, how much are you communicating with those guys that are fighting for the jobs? Is this a daily conversation, or is this just something that you just need to see uh, to finally make that decision open the night? Well, I mean, we, we definitely talked about it um, be before um, our first practice. I always tell the guys, respect this process of training camp because there's guys – that are fighting for their professional life that deserve that type of respect and commitment from everybody to lock in and do their job. And there's also guys that are fighting for starting spots and there's guys that are fighting for minutes as um, some of our backup spots. So it, it's well aware that they, everybody, if you don't know by now, um, you're under, they're probably under a rock the first couple of days, but it's been very competitive. Everybody's getting a fair chance in practice. Uh, but it's going to be, you know, interesting to see these next three games, see who steps in and, and plays well and, you know, gets those spots. But that, 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 that spot, as we're probably talking about, you guys are well aware of the, of the wing position. It's probably more than likely it's going to be pretty fluid and it's going to be some, could be um, a spot that's played by committee. Thanks, Scotty. Yep. Dave Johnson. Hey, Scott, just um, getting ready for the first preseason game, but just uh, what's been the best part of this week for you, if you could just look back at uh, what you've accomplished and what do you think has been the best part? Uh, I, I think just uh, just the spirit of competition, being back together. It's nothing like being in the gym. It's nothing like being around NBA players and, and, and watching them compete against each other. Uh, and, I mean, it's, we're about ready to, to play somebody else. But I think just coming back, uh, knowing what, um, what it took the NBA to put us in this position, and it's, there's going to have to be a lot of detailed uh, and, and discipline to make everybody uh, as safe as we possibly can be. But just being back, is, it's great. I, I love the gym. I love to be around it. I love to be around our guys and it's uh, the camaraderie that the guys are building, the bonding that they're, they're establishing. The first week of training camp has been probably better than I even expected. I'd say it's probably a, it is a great feeling of elation because it, well, it may not be the end of October. It's, it's not that far off being able to start in December. That, that is a big accomplishment. No, I mean, it was, I mean, no, none of us, nobody in, you know, in the NBA in the world knew that this was going to be uh, part of how we live, you know, from March on. And, but I, we're doing our best and we're going to continue to keep everybody safe and healthy as best we can. And, and but I think our guys understand what, what's at hand and we have to, we, it's, we're, we need each other to you know, hold each other accountable. Uh, but I think it's a great opportunity just to see guys in training camp compete against each other. Um, and normally, yeah, normally it's the end of September, October. Uh, but we're looking forward to starting, you know, Christmas Day, uh, or a few days before Christmas, the first game. So that's going to be exciting for everybody. It's going to be exciting for the, the, the players, the fans, uh, everybody involved. Fred? Hey, Scott, just, just regarding what you said to Chris's question about guys uh, who might not play on, on Sunday, does kind of the, uh, the shortened off season and then obviously only three preseason games, does, does that affect how many reps you're trying to, and, and obviously you have a very important player you're trying to integrate into the roster. Does, does that affect how you're going to run 
practices, how often you scrimmage, that sort of stuff over the next week so you can get guys as many reps as possible, or is that not a concern? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a balance, Fred. We're, we're all trying to do that, and it's just not on, you know, not on my shoulders. It's everybody, the players, our performance team, sports scientists. We want to make sure guys are ready for the 23rd. And this is unique because there wasn't a lot of pickup games uh, throughout the summer. Uh, and then especially, you know, the, the week or the month before you even start training camp in your own market. So I would love to have guys because we got some new players that we need to add and integrate and, and build that, you know, that chemistry and that synergy with one another. But it's also I'm more concerned. I'm more concerned about their health, physical health, and, and making sure that's squared away first. So it's really just little steps and just figuring out, you know, getting them ready, the best way to get them ready for the 23rd. I'd love to have them, you know, play a game, some good minutes, maybe a, a good solid half. And then, uh, but luckily for us, the newer players, I mean, the new players, and they came, they, they, they're in here, one, because they bring a, a, the professionalism, the toughness, and the IQ. So they, they, they could be able to pick things up pretty quick, but we definitely need them to get on the court a, a few minutes here and there. Ava? Um, Scott, kind of piggybacking off of this, and I, I know you kind of, you talk about the health and safety aspect with guys all the time, but in terms of the contingency factor where this season, you might have guys missing games and, and lineups changing and everything like that. How do you approach those conversations with the team? Or is that something that you don't even necessarily, like? Do you want to maybe go about it as normally as you possibly can when you're preparing or, or do you guys talk about stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I think about it all the time, all the time I think about it. And like I, I told the players from day one, I tell them constantly, it's about everybody's uh, health and, 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 and being safe. We love this game. We're, we will do whatever it takes to have success in this game, but our families are always the most important thing. And, and this is secondary. We have to be disciplined on, on everything this year. This is unique. The whole world is going through it and we got to do our part. And, and we know as, as we've seen, you know, there's going to be, you know, whatever you could be it's disciplined and, and just, it's going to happen. Just, it's just a matter of, you know, when, and we have to, you know, be careful and, and everything, but, as the coach going into it, I know there's going to be probably times we're going to miss some games and we hope that it doesn't happen often or, or not a, a big number. But like I told the guys from day one, it's about being healthy and, you know, being safe because we have a lot, there's a lot of stake with our families. Health is the most important thing. And then you mentioned that um, this first week went better than expected. What about it kind of exceeded your expectations or what did you notice most, I guess? Just the, just uh, looking, you know, looking back, going into it, normally you get a, a, a peek at everybody's health and conditioning throughout the summer. And then usually right after Labor Day for the whole entire month of September, you can see the guys. So you kind of understand going into that first practice, what you can do and what you, where, where guys baseline is, but we, we didn't have that. And they were able to come in with, you know, great conditioning. And so that was great to see. That kind of exceeded my expectations. Uh, so their, their baseline was pretty good. Everybody from one to all the guys that are here. Um, and then just the, I knew we changed, we changed up things last year. So I knew guys were going to really compete and, and practice hard and, and, and pull for one another and, but also challenge each other during practice. But it, it's even taken another level with the, the added guys that we brought in, the leadership and Brad and, and Russell, just seeing, just seeing those two guys already connect. Uh, that's been, that's been great to see uh, unfold. And, and, and when you have those two guys connecting every day and they're treating every practice as, uh, as this is what we have to do to get better. And we're going to try to win this practice. It, it just trickles down to the rest of the team and they understand how serious they are. And it's easy. I mean, it's definitely it's, they're doing their part of coaching these younger guys as well as our coaches are.
Is that it? Oh, sorry, my thing. Come on, Scott. Stop that. Neil? Hey, Coach. Uh, could you update us on what Bertans has been able to do in the past couple of days since you last told us, and is the expectation that he might be able to take in part in some group stuff tomorrow? Yeah, I think um, everything's going as, as planned. He's doing a lot of individual work um, just by himself, the, the, the work. Um, and then hopefully tomorrow, if everything keeps going as, as, as it's progressing, uh, I'm pretty sure that he's going to be able to participate in, in group um, workouts. Now, I have not asked in a couple of days. I was told that it was more than likely Saturday. So we'll know more, obviously, today. And, but tomorrow, it would be great that you know, he can participate in group. It would be very limited. We're not going to throw him in. And it's it's going to be a light practice because we're traveling tomorrow. Um, so it's going to be great. Now, I don't know if he's going to travel with us or, or not. That's uh, another question that I have to ask. Brianna? Hey, Coach Brooke. Um, so, of course, with this condensed um, prep time to get ready for the season, on your off days, what are you encouraging the players to do? Obviously, rest is important, but also with this quick turnaround, what are some of your things that you want them to still work on? Well, the, the thing that we always have to do is come in to the facility and, and, and take our, our COVID test. So that's always, you have to do that. And sometimes, I mean, even yesterday, it, I knew we, I had to do it, but you kind of think that you can take your time, but there's times that we have to get here by. So that, and, and then also just take care of your, take care of your body. Uh, these guys have been going really hard. So, and then the season's a grind. So I think it's, it's important, you know, sometimes younger players don't realize it. They think they can just go, 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 but we want to be, be wise in, in, in our off days and take advantage of it. Some days completely off, gym's closed. And some days you got to come in get some light work, uh, get some treatment if you need it, but you definitely still have to come in uh, to take your test. So that's, that's always, you know, number one thing we have to do every day. Chase? Hey, Scott. Um, you said earlier in the week that Denny had banged his knee. Is he all good now? Uh, and yeah. you expect him to, uh, how many minutes do you expect him to play on Sunday? Um, don't know exactly his number, but I like to get him right around, I don't know, I can't even, I mean, uh, probably 20 ish, somewhere around there. Uh, but uh, he's good. He went through the entire practice today. Felt great. He's, he's, he's learning. He's learning as we go. And that's one thing I, I love the, the, what the staff is doing with the seems like about 15 guys now. They're getting, you know, on the court at 11 15, going over 15 minutes of some defensive uh, work that we need to, to pick up on. And then also our offensive uh, playbook. So they're doing that. So they're getting a little extra work. It's not. Uh, it's not hard on the body. It's just a lot of the mental work that they have to do. So, and he's picking things up pretty quickly. So that's good. To, that's good to know. But we're going to help him as much as we can. Uh, but I, I anticipate him playing. You know, maybe 18 to 20, low 20s, maybe. And um, the Rockets play their first preseason game tonight, which means John could play for the first time in almost two years. What will it be like seeing him out there? And also. He's wearing your jersey number, your Rockets jersey number. I'm curious, uh, what type of legacy is he walking into with that? It's going to be, it's going to be tough to fill. <laughs> you know, it's going to be tough. There's been a lot of great tandems in the league's history. Uh, Magic and Jabbar, Shaq and Kobe, uh, Lajuan and Brooks. That's going to, he's going to, I'm sure he's going to, knowing John, he's going to do his best. Um, yeah, he has some ten and a half shoes to fill, so I'm sure he's going to be able to fill those pretty quickly. After about two minutes on the court, he's going to have a better career than I had in my three years there. Uh, wish him nothing but the best. I'm as a fan of the league and a fan of John. I definitely will be watching if he does play if it's on the, the league pass. Um, yeah, I anticipate him having a a, a very um, productive year. All right, thanks, Coach. Did I leave any else out on the tandems? I can't think of any more. Tan That's probably top three tandems, right? Brooks and Mo Cheeks. Ah, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you guys.
Thank you. There's a possibility that you will not play Sunday. I'm curious, how do you normally, in a normal year, obviously with no pandemic, how do you prepare yourself for a season? Um, mentally is more important. Obviously, physically is a huge part of it, but just take my time with my body. My, I listen to my body um, and figure out the best time to be able to make sure I'm ready to go to start a season. And uh, the follow-up is obviously there's a new member of the Jumpman family. Uh, Brad posted the other day that uh, let's just say you had a few boxes in your locker that might have spilled out um, among the rest of the locker room. What's it like to have four guys a part of the Jumpman family? Oh, that's great, man. It's just amazing. Being a part of a family, number one, is um, it's an honor. And uh, Brad and, and Mo and Rui, um, you know, they they definitely been be able to enjoy the Jordan brand. Obviously, Brad is going to be a huge part of the brand, and I'm excited to have him on board. Thanks, man. Fred? Hey, Russell. What's up? Um, Speaking, speaking of Brad, uh, you've obviously competed against him a ton, but you've now had about a week where you've been playing with him. Is there anything about playing next to him that you've learned that you didn't already know coming into this a week ago? Um, just how patient and of a great scorer he is. He's an um, unbelievable scorer getting to his spots, um, being patient, um, very fluent, as most of you guys know, but being able to see it and um, – in practice and finding ways to um, keep him going is uh, most important for our team. Um, you got to find ways to stay aggressive, to be in attack mode. And I've, I've been able to see that in the last couple of days and seeing how he attacks, seeing where he wants the ball. So it's going to be a learning process all year long. And uh, my job is to make the game easy for him. Thanks, Russell. Ava. Hey, Russell. Um Scott Brooks told us this week that you kind of came in and were very vocal right away, like having a, a head coach out there on the court. Obviously, they brought you in in part for your leadership, but you're also walking into a franchise that has a lot of guys that played together and everything like that. Did you feel like you had to maybe alter your approach or anything like that or say like, oh, maybe I've got, okay, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that. A lot of times, it's not an alter, it's just who I am. It's plain and simple. Um, there's no sugar coating, there's no me trying to be somebody I'm not. Since I've been in this league, since I've been um, able to play the game at this level, um, I feel like I'm one of the best leaders in the game. Um, and leadership is not by what you say and all the shit that people see and all that, but it's actually what you do and how you impact and, and better your teammates um, as men, um, as people, as, um, as they kind of grow in their relationship Outside of basketball, leadership to me is, is defined differently. Um, and I take an approach the same way I've always taken it, uh, of coming in and using my voice, but not just that, um, connecting with the guys on a different level. And I try to do that with each one of my teammates. Um, that's the sacrifice it takes to be a leader. Um, and I'm grateful to be in a position where guys can come to me and ask me questions. Um, and I take advantage of just trying to part as much as I can. Um, not saying I know it all because I don't. But also, um, I understand how it is to be able to connect with somebody that you've never met before. Um, uniquely about this team, we have a lot of different, a lot of different guys from a lot of different cultures, different countries. Um, which is to me, I was telling my wife last night how uh, I'm grateful for that because it gives me an opportunity to learn a little bit about different cultures, how guys do things, how they celebrate things, um, just overall. So that that's exciting in itself for me. And the Wizards talk a lot about how they have so many people on the roster who have um, three or less, fewer years of service in the league. Does this feel like a young team to you? What's your kind of read on that? Um, it feels like a team that's hungry, wants to win. Um, youth um, is a great thing, but honestly, we, we, we don't talk about it as a team internally. Our job is to make sure that we go out and compete. Uh, we want to compete with the best team. To be able to do that, we got to be able to uh, use what we have and find ways to be effective. And um, that's what we've been doing the last couple of days. Thank you. Chase? Uh, yes, uh, Russell, uh, following up on the different cultures thing, it, does that have an effect on the floor in terms of style of play? Because you guys actually might end up having more international players than any other team this year. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know style of play. I mean, it definitely could help. You know, there's so many different things, the way they learned the game of basketball and, and obviously the way that we've played it here in the, in the States. But um, just being able to learn other cultures 
understanding their struggle, understanding um, you know, why they play the game. A lot of people play for different reasons, for their firm, for their families, their kids. Um, it's all important when you get together because we're all in this together. We're all on one team, and that's the Wizards, and we want to find ways to be able to collectively bring everybody together and use what we have. And speaking of uh, style of play, Jerome Robinson said the other day, with you and Ish as the point guards, the pace could be unbelievable. Uh, this team played really fast last year, but now they're adding you. Uh, what, what have you noticed about the speed of the game for you guys in practice? Speed is important. That's our advantage, um, getting up the floor. Um, definitely a, the, probably one of the best parts of my game is transition, being able to, I've been able to do that at a level um, that's effective in the last couple of years or since I've been in the league. So I definitely use that to my advantage and um, find ways to get them uh, give guys the ball in transition, give them open shots, um, make the game easy for them. Dave Johnson. Russell, you know, calling this team's games last season, just I, the word joy came to mind this because this team just played with such joy and passion. Just want to get your impressions now that you've been with the team this week. What What is it like uh, to be inside this uh, this team for a week? It is a young group, but it's a group that's hungry to win now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been good. The energy's been great. Um, my job is to make sure it's consistent. A lot of times you – it's easy. A lot of, you know, 20 or 29 other teams are – got good energy the first week, and that's okay. Now, can you, can it be sustainable? Um, and that's the part where my job comes in, that to make sure that every day we, we punch the clock, but not just punching the clock, but we coming in and making sure that our minds and our bodies are focused on our energy towards positive things, win, lose, or draw. We still got to come in and be the most effective we can be because, um, you know, I just honestly believe that this game um, is not, you don't play to take it for granted. So the opportunity you're given to be able to play it, uh, you leave it all on the floor uh, mentally and physically. Quentin. How you doing, Russ? Um, Going into Sunday's game where you know you're not playing, I mean, I know the leadership aspect and, and the on-court coach aspect is very important to you, but what are you looking for the most out of the guys that are going to be getting a lot of playing time on Sunday? Just playing hard, man. This first preseason game, been a while. Um, a lot of guys ain't played in a while. Um, quick turnaround for some guys. Just going out, open your lungs up a little bit, enjoying the game. Um, we didn't put too much stuff in, just going out and competing and getting our feet wet a little bit, but playing hard. Playing hard is not an option. We should be able to do that every night. It's got to be our DNA. It's got to be how we uh, set our staple when we go out to compete because um, that's what it's going to take for us to win games. And also, I saw this morning as you're arriving to the practice facilities, you're listening to Nip the Great. Awesome. What would you say is your top, let's go top three West Coast artists of all time? Uh, Hustle, Kendrick. Um, and I'm Snoop. Okay. It's a good list. Appreciate you. Glenn, assuming that Quentin didn't just steal your question there. Glenn, go ahead. <laughs> I wrote the lyrics to those songs, by the way. <laughs> I believe it. Hey, Russ, um, just curious. Obviously, you, you're coming in um, uh, as a leader, uh, you know, all NBA, MVP of the league. Just curious to, to know when you first came into the league, you know, who were the guys you looked up to on your team that were leaders that you were able to pick and pull from um, to kind of get you where you are now and even, you know, use some of the leadership abilities that they showed you? Well, hmm. the only person I would say from that team, Nick Collison. Nick Collison taught me so much. Um, and Damian Wilkins, those two was probably the only two that from that team when I first got in the league that ever actually taught me just about leadership, understanding the game, understanding how the league works. Um, but not just about basketball. I learned a lot about finances, about taking care of my family, about different things outside of basketball allowed me to be able to keep going and keep my mind on, on basketball. Um, and I would say those two, especially Nick. Nick is a good friend of mine still to this day. And, um, I'm just thankful for him and his uh, ability to be able to just sit down and give me knowledge, um, be able to understand what it's like to be in the NBA um, and understand I'd like to, to create some consistency for yourself and being able to come back better each and every year is something that I constantly keep in my head because uh, I was able to be taught that, you know, internally, um, you know, from that Oklahoma City team in my first year. 
Thank you. Troy? Hey, Russ, how are you doing? Um, I want to uh, ask you a question about, I know you're coming into the Wizards as a, uh, as, as a team leader, but you also are coming in as a guy who, you know, is very active in the NBA Players Association. So you're also a, a leader amongst like all of the NBA players. How did you feel uh, coming out of the bubble about, you know, what, what you guys did as far as the social justice reform and the work that you know, we can players in the teams that were able to do combining and uh, turning the arenas into uh, voting facilities and the, you know, kind of the impact that you all did have on uh, you know, the campaign going on and getting people out to vote. And where do you think the next step is for uh, that? Well, which question do you want? I heard that <laughs> in one, so I, Could you hear that? I don't know what you asked. It was hard for me to hear, but I think you're asking something about. Oh, 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 oh. No, just, just let me. I just want to know, what you, you all feel about, how, how did you feel about the work that you all did? <laughs> Oh, that's good. So um, I think the, the most important part about that times, and um, unfortunately, it takes uh, somebody to lose their life. It takes somebody to lose their their son, their their brother, um, for the world to be able to come to notice. But unfortunately, this is our everyday life. Being an African American male um, in today's society um, is tough. Um, and just just growing up in the city myself, you understand the struggles, understand what it's like. But I do think the important part of I think the players did in, in um, as part of the union and the players in the bubble is that we came together. That to me is the number one thing. Whenever you're able to get a group of guys, a group of men together in the same room, regardless if we, if we agree or disagree, uh, being able to come together and have a conversation about things that need to be changed. Um, and I think the stand we made in the bubble was great, but also the work now continues. Um, and that's something that I do daily, daily conversations of finding ways to do it now being here in DC. I just believe things happen for a reason. And if God has put me in a position to be able to, to get closer to, to here and now being in, a, in, in, in the capital and understanding the resources and the people here to be able to get in, into those doors and talk to the, these senators, talk to these, obviously when a new president comes in, being able to talk to him and understanding um, the things that we need to change in, in our financial system and our health education system and, and so many sectors in our, uh, you know, in our incarceration uh, system and find a ways to be able to get into each of those doors because I, I believe that I can be able to do that uh, with my platform and I believe a lot of NBA players believe they can do the same and collectively as a unit we're stronger than uh, one of us standing together so um, I don't know if that answers your question but that's where I'm at with it. No, that's perfect man sorry my, my internet's probably a little shifty over here man but thank you though. that was perfect. All good chat. Ben? Hey, Russ, hope you're well. To my account, this is your 12th NBA training camp, and correct me if I'm wrong there. Now that you've had some time to meet your new teammates and get to learn their basketball tendencies, are there players that have surprised you or stood out? There's a lot of guys here that stood out. Um, and I won't say names because um, there's so many guys I didn't know since I got here and understanding what their abilities are. Um, I'm just here to better help and enhance it. You know, and I, I'm, I'm going to keep harping on that because that's why uh, I feel like I'm here because I want to be able to help enhance and help guys become better players and they help me become better player, a better player as well. And I'm excited about that. It's been a busy start of the month. Uh, what, what's your takeaway now that you've had a, a week on the floor with a, with a new team paint? Oh, it's been great. It's been, uh, it's been a new, new energy. You know, uh, Russ brings a, a, def, a definite focus and uh, a persona about himself that, you know, resonates with the rest of the team, you know, in a good manner, you know, it's, it's, you have no choice but to feed off of his energy. And, uh, you know, it's been nothing but positive vibes. And like I said before, the, the energy has been through the roof. You know, coach probably has to stop us sometimes because we're going, probably going too hard. So um, it's just, it's been great. You know, it's still an adjustment on everybody's behalf, but, you know, so far so good for sure. And what do you think will be the biggest challenge for you two? If challenge is the right word, is you, you get used to, I guess, playing with each other. What, what will that be like? 
It's tough, man, because it really doesn't seem like it's a challenge while we're out here. It's like we're just naturally playing. He knows our you know our sets right now, and it's just more or less kind of knowing where he likes his shots and where he likes the ball. You know, I'm I'm easily to to adapt to. You know, I'm not going to come in and say I need this shot, I need the ball here, there. It doesn't matter. You know, as long as you know we're all incorporated within the offense and you know everybody's eating, we're good. You know, but I think definitely learning where he likes his shots and where he likes the ball is probably our biggest adjustment. But um, it's been one that we're we're able to adapt to for sure. Chris. Size 11 in PEB ones. Uh, never mind. Uh, hey, man, I know it's hard for you to sit and watch games. Are you cool with not playing in Brooklyn? And how are you approaching this truncated preseason? It's tough. It's tough. Uh, I haven't talked to Coach um, too much about it. Uh, we hinted on, you know, pretty much getting a rhythm. We haven't said how many games we will play or if we will play. Um, I haven't decided on on Brooklyn either. I definitely want to be able to get in sometime in, in any of these games to be able to get a rhythm and you know get a good flow. Uh, but I definitely feel like in practice I'm I'm getting it too. But I, I think just the length in between games is what's kind of you know our judgment call on it. You know we have a lot of time between. I think we play Sunday and then we don't play again until Thursday or Wednesday or something like that. So um, you know we have a gap in between there, but uh, I haven't decided yet on that, Chris. And obviously the big news for you today was off the court. Uh, congratulations on your partnership with Jumpman. Can you just kind of walk us through that process? And clearly you wore Jays pretty much since Miss Best to put shoes on your feet. What's it like now to have that branding behind you? It's a blessing, man. Uh, I say thank you for one, but it's a blessing because, you know, ultimately Mike has to sign off on it. You know, Mike has to ultimately make that decision on who, who he wants a part of his brand. Uh, we know he can't dive too deep into it with him being an owner, but, um, you know, the fact that he still has some ties to his brand and, you know, he's able to kind of handpick who he likes. Uh, I think that speaks volumes, you know, and that's, that's definitely motivational for me, you know, growing up a Mike fan, growing up always wearing J's. Um, I have an infinite amount of stories that I can tell of just playing in the shoes. I've never worn anything but Nikes and Jordans in my life. So, um, you know, the move made sense for me. In my fam and in everything else that you know, I have strong morals and, and beliefs in too. You know, they're they're big in the community. You see, with Mike, uh, just committed to the you know the black community over the past summer. You know, that was very important to me too. Um, so it was a lot that factored into the decision. Uh, it's a family atmosphere. My brother Jason's over there too. My my high school is sponsored by Jordan. Florida is sponsored by Jordan. So it was kind of like it was set all set up for Brad to kind of come home. So I'm definitely happy that I'm part of the Jordan family. Do you remember when you dropped in Chaminade in, in the 11s? Do you have a story about that one? Oh, man. it's It was so funny. So they posted a picture today of me in an uh, old photo shoot my sophomore year uh, wearing the bread 11s. And uh, that, was, that was the first time they came out in a long time. So I was one of the first guys in school to have it. So I was like, I got to rock them for the photo shoot. Uh, but later on in the year, I ended up playing in, in 12s. You know, I, I hooped in 12s my sophomore, junior year. Then my senior year, I actually bought a, team, a pair of Team J's uh, from Marshalls. Um, and so, literally, you know, they were light as I don't know what, and I, I threw them on my feet. And I always say that was the reason I averaged 35 my senior year in high school. So, it had to be the shoes. I'll jump in. I don't know if it was me, but uh, congratulations, Brad. Um, my first question I asked this to Russell Westbrook is not playing on Sunday, like you said, it's tough for you, but what are you looking forward to seeing from your teammates on the floor? Um, I mean, you're a leader, you're evaluating things of that nature. What are you looking to see out of those young guys? The biggest thing is always, can we carry over the same intensity and focus over into a game? It's easy to do it against your teammates and guys you kind of know. You know, you can compete against them. You know, there won't be any hard feelings or anything like that. But what are you going to do when the bright lights are on, guys are trash talking, fouls aren't getting called your way, you know, you face some adversity. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I think it's just, you know, kind of how we respond in those situations, you know, because in practice, you know, we're able, it's more controlled. We, we kind of have control over what's going on, what we can do, stopping plays and things like that. So uh, it'll, it'll definitely be different going against another team whose plays we don't know, fresh faces, fresh bodies, uh, different intangibles. So it'll be... 
it'll be interesting. So, you know, on everybody's behalf, uh, I'm excited for it, though, because we definitely have a group who's willing, you know, who's willing to go out there and play hard, who's willing to learn, and they compete at the highest level. So I'm excited for everything. And also, how much do you like those Jubilee 11s? Like, I'm, I'm, they're one of my personal favorites, but how much do you like them? I don't want to put y'all down, but I got two pair I have. They sent me two pair. I'm so happy. You know, Go ahead, slide, slide one to the side for me. It's all good. I might be able to work with you, but they nice. They are, they are, they are very nice. They're very you nice. Be. Ellis? Oh, my man Darren got them on right now. So if y'all want to beat them up, Y'all know where he live. Y'all want me to get him up off his foot? Are you at nine? Eleven and a half. Eleven. Eleven and a half. So I hey, got Chris. Hey, Chris. We pulling up. Y'all want me to put Dan on the jump? Y'all want to put him on the screen? He got him on right now. I can jump him. <laughs> Take him right off his feet. Brad. Hey, Rob. What's going on, man? Brad, what's up? Um... I am wondering, I know you have played against Russell a million times. I know you've watched him on TV or in person or whatever a million and one times. Uh, from, from a pure, I mean, we've heard a million stories so far about what he's done for you guys attitude-wise and, and the way he's affected emotionally. But you've now played, played with him for about a week or so and you've started scrimmaging. If we're going to nerd out about the X's and O's of basketball with him, what what have you picked up on that he likes? What have you picked up on that's working between the two of you? He's a great passer. He can pass the hell out of the ball. Like he's he can pass the ball and his pace is crazy. It's 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 crazy because I don't want to just compare him and John, but he's very fast with the ball. Like he's very he pushes the pace. He gets up. He loves to get up and down the floor, and he's looking for for his shooters. That's what he's doing, and I think it's definitely. It's definitely cool to see that, you know, I feel like there's always a false narrative on Russ, you know, but he's looking for guys. He's trying to get guys the ball. He's, he's coaching, you know, he's a true player coach and, you know, I'm definitely happy and excited. We have him. It's been, uh, it's been fun to learn from him and adjust, just adjusting with him as well. Um, but like you said, Fred playing with him for the past week, it's, it hasn't been too crazy. It hasn't been like too big of an adjustment to where it's like, Oh man, damn, it's a whirlwind. Like it's, it's been smooth sailing. Like it's, He's pushing the pace. He's getting guys involved. You know, the ball is moving. We don't want to always come down and have to call the play. You know, we want to be able to come down and, you know, get stops and push the ball, get out in transition, get some easy baskets, you know, let Russ be able to manip manipulate defenses, break them down and get in the paint, you know, whether he wants to get to his, his shots, his back downs, or if he wants to be able to, you know, kick threes. We, we, we're open feeling and we're, we're learning from him. So it's definitely, it's definitely an adjustment, but it's been, it's been better than expected. So he's he's had the good fortune of playing with a lot of really great perimeter players in his career. Like he's he's had a ton of them. Mm -hmm. Are there any of them that you watch and you're like, oh, you know what? That re that set really worked well with Russell. I could do that. Like, are you studying other guards or other wings that he's played with and trying to implement anything? No, because I'm uh, I'm different. I'm not you know I'm not KD. I'm not PG. I'm not Vic. You know I'm you know I'm not James. We all maybe have some similarities, but we're all different, you know, in our ways. So, you know, I'm not I'm not going to judge Russ off, off of his previous relationships with guys and on other teams. You know, I want to, you know, I want to be able to get my put my foot in his shoes and you know, kind of put, you know, be in be in a moment. You know, I want to be able to experience these things for myself. So, you know, I haven't had any of those, and I'm not going to compare myself to. A lot of the guys, you know, but you can see what he was able to do when he played with PG and Vic and KD. Like he's he elevates these guys' games. He helps push guys, you know, to another level. So you know, I'm I'm expecting the same thing for him to push me, get on me, you know, you know, get the best out of me every night too. Thanks, Brad. Ava. Hey, Brad. Obviously, you watched all the the young guys down in the bubble, even though you weren't able to be there. But since being back on court with everybody, what have you noticed or where have you seen improvement, I guess, specifically in guys who had a lot of starting minutes last year in, in Thomas Bryant and Rui? I think they're in attention to detail, you know, just knowing where to be in spots, knowing that, you know, if I'm getting double teamed with a lot, you know, where to be, where to catch the ball. Um, you know, so I think it's just the game is just slowing down a lot more for the younger guys. And, uh, and it's just a matter of just getting out on the floor and playing. You know, the bubble definitely helped the guys out a lot. Uh, it offered them a lot of opportunities to be able to play, to be able to work through a lot of the kinks, work through some adversity. 
you know, without me being on the floor, without GD being there, without John being there, without, you know, Russ now being there. So it was, it was, it helped, you know, it helped kind of propel, throw guys into the fire to be able to say, okay, you know, what, what are you guys, what are we going to do? You know, we got to get better. You know, you have to be able to show coach and show Shep that, you know, we're able to take these young guys and get better with them. So I think they've done that in the bubble and, you know, they, it was a direct carryover right into camp, you know, so I'm definitely excited to see moving forward, um, you know, just their continued uh, attention to detail and and just their work ethic. You know, it's always through the roof, like I said before, but through camp, everybody's work ethic and intensity has been through the roof. You know, that's never the problem, but it's it's now playing with some IQ and some smarts. Thanks, Brad. Go ahead, Consor. What up, E? What up, G-Money? Bradley, let me, I know you worked hard in the off season on your body and, and your hips and your upper body and, and you know and, and all the stuff that goes with becoming stronger and you know you becoming more durable in the NBA let me let me ask you about um, your, the, the skill sets that you want to improve on this year um, you know you really don't have a, a whole lot of time in the offseason to to work on you know ball handling and shooting and passing and, and the other stuff but what are some of the things you know, you want to get, you had a career year, year last year in points and assists and rebounds and everything else. Um, but what do you want to get to yourself? Because uh, obviously from the team standpoint, you want to win games. You want to become a better defensive team um, this year. But what about you wanting to get better at? Well, personally, I want to get better defensively. I hated the narrative that everybody said I slacked off from last year of defense. Um, I feel like we were just a bad team defensively as a team. And we just carry over to everyone individually. Uh, so I think that's first and foremost, proving that, because um, I am a willing defender. Um, and then two, just constantly, just like you said, it is a short off season. But for me, it was working on deeper threes, uh, whether in transition off the dribble. Uh, you know, a lot of teams are pressing out more and, you know, trying to take the ball out of my hand and double a lot. So. Uh, being able to create some space, you know, better off my, my isolation situations, posting up a little bit more and uh, working on deep threes. So. so many great players in the NBA that they can pull from, but uh, just using last year, you know, uh, who, who really surprised you where you, you just walk, you walk out of the arena going, wow, that guy is on, on another planet. I don't know. Cause I don't, I'm tough, G Money. I don't give a lot of people credit, and I know I'm like that's why I'm asking. I'm not in awe of a lot of people, so uh, that's a tough one. But I do. I would say a guy who I always respect and admire is Dame. I always like Dame's game. I watch him, just his work ethic, you know. Um, and he always he always improves his game every year. Every year he adds something, you know. Whether he takes a step back and shoots it further, I think he even shot. I think he shot further. He had shot a better percentage further away from the line than he did closer to the three-point line. And, you know, granted, I don't know if you want to say that's good or bad, but, you know, it just speaks volumes of him just putting things, you know, into his game. You know, he's a magnificent uh, ball handler, gets to the basket. He, he manipulates defenses, you know. So I, I definitely – I'm our dame in what he does um, for sure. Thank you. And Chase. Hey, Brad, uh, congrats on joining Team Jordan. Um, you guys have a ton of international players. You might have more than any other team on opening night. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, have you noticed anything when playing with these guys that stands out as different, like a pass, a move, anything on the court where you're like, oh, you know, that, that, that's definitely something I hadn't seen before? No, 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 not to that extent. Uh, I would say one, one thing that they all have in common is that they, they don't back down from anybody. They don't back down from anybody. You know, they, they might even take offense to, you know, us calling it, you know, international players versus us, you know. They, so they kind of they kind of play with that chip on their shoulder. And uh, and we love it, you know, from, you know, Denny Rui and on down. Like, everybody has that mentality. Like, okay, we're, we're basketball players just like everybody else. You know, don't put a label on us. So, you know, we admire that. We respect it. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter where anyone's from. As long as you can play ball, that's all we, we really care about. And I want to go back to something you said about um, Russell Westbrook's energy, how it kind of brings out the best of you. 
Uh, Paul George last week on All the Smoke said that he, he had his best season in OKC because of that, because Westbrook brought it every single night. Um, do you feel like he can elevate your game and sort of challenge you in a similar way? Oh, 100%. You know, that's what I love the most. I love when, you know, I'm a constructive criticism guy I can take. You know, I want guys to, you know, get on my head, tell me to play better, you know, tell me to let's go. Like, you know, light a fire, light a fuel up under me. Like, I like that, you know. So, um, you know, I definitely think he, he'll propel me, you know, to a new level that I haven't tapped into yet. And uh, I'm definitely excited about it. Like, granted, I'm confident in myself and in my game to be able to take another step. But, you know, he is a former MVP, nine-time All-NBA guy, however many All-Star games he's made. Like, he's... He's a future Hall of Famer, so, you know, I'm all ears and I'm excited to play with.